Hey, I'm Chris Velasco with the Washington Post Help Desk, where we help you figure out the tech in your life. And I want you to do me a favor really quickly. Reach into your pocket or your bag and pull out your smartphone. If it's anything like mine, it's a glass and metal slab, and it looks probably a lot like the ones we've had for over a decade now. Thankfully, over the last couple weeks, I've gotten the chance to learn about, and in some cases, try some new devices that dare to do things differently, so I thought we should take a closer look. Now, if we're talking oddball, there are a few devices out there like this, Samsung's latest Galaxy Z Fold 4, and I'm actually lying to you. This is last year's model because Samsung hasn't given us one to try out yet. The new model, the Galaxy Z Fold 4, is a little lighter than this and the external screen that you're meant to use like a phone when it's closed is a little wider so it feels a little less like you're thumbing a hot dog. And the camera situation is a little better too. I love mine and I know a lot of people who love theirs too but at $1800 to start this is still a little ridiculous for most people. This is the Astro Slide 5G. It's thick, it doesn't have a particularly great looking screen, and it's not even all that powerful. So why are people making a fuss about it? The main draw is this. It's actually at times been an absolute joy to type on, but because this is a product made by a small company, it does have small company problems. When I type at full speed or as close to it as I can, the right side of the space bar just doesn't seem to work. At the end of the day, I'd be kidding myself and you if I said this was anywhere near a perfect device. But the ideas at play here are so fascinating that I don't want this company to give up. I want them to keep working on this concept. This is the Nothing Phone One. Like the Astro Slide is the product of a startup, but you just wouldn't be able to tell just based off of the fit and finish. It's actually kind of reminiscent of Apple's bigger iPhone. It works much the same way that you'd expect from a regular mid-range smartphone, so competently, but not always flawlessly. But there is something else going on here that I do think is kind of cool. If you jump into the settings and set this up, you do get the option to enable what is called the Glyph interface. This is made out of a series of 900 white LEDs running around the device. And as it stands, you can use them for a few things. Right now, I actually have the camera open. You can use these backlights as a fill light. What you're really meant to use these lights for is as a sort of visual notification. If someone calls you, for example, you'll be able to tie their contacts to a specific ringtone and therefore a specific lighting pattern. You can also set it so if you use Google Assistant and activate it with your voice, the lights will light up to let you know that you're talking to it. Hey Google, what's, how's, the, how's the weather back in Philadelphia? And when you're charging, you'll be able to see this little exclamation point light up as the battery fills up. Hopefully by the time this company gets around to releasing a smartphone in the United States, because you can't buy this here just yet, it'll have a better idea of what to use this really interesting lighting setup for, because I'm into it, and I want to be able to use it for more. So yeah, if you want a smartphone that's a little off the beaten path, a little more unique, you can have that. And for prices that are not as ludicrous as people generally expect. If you have questions about what technologies are worth investing in or what phone might be right for you, we'd love to hear about them. Send an email to yourhelpdesk at washpost.com. We check the inbox every day and hopefully we'll hear from you and get back to you pretty soon.